I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we are speaking with author Xiomara Rodriguez. She is a Reno resident and a retired U.S. Coast Guard veteran who is bringing her unique experiences to a thrilling crime novel. It is called How Could It Be? As the first Hispanic female special agent in the Coast Guard Investigative Service, she draws upon her 20-year career and her work co-founding To Casa Latina, a nonprofit supporting victims of domestic violence and human trafficking. Now she is fulfilling her lifelong dream of writing, captivating readers with her gripping stories, inspired by her own remarkable personal journey. We are delighted to have Siomara join us today in the spotlight. Thank the folks at Bookside Press for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like her by subscribing to our channel. Siomara, thank you so much for being our guest. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's a great pleasure to be here with you today and your audience. Oh, the pleasure is all mine. Let's start with the big question. How could it be? Tell the folks at home what the book is all about. How Could It Be is a crime mystery short story. It's a very fast read. It's meant to entertain. The premises are two sisters, twin sisters. One is a lieutenant on the homicide of San Francisco PD. The other is an FBI agent. But they do not know that they're sisters. They have never met each other until the FBI agent gets shot at the parking lot of the San Francisco PD offices, headquarters. Then they have to figure out how they were separated, what happened, and who was after the FBI agent. Was, were they after the FBI agent or were they after the lieutenant because they look so much alike? They have to solve that crime too. Wonderful, wonderful. It, it's a thrilling premise. It's an intriguing premise for sure these two sisters brought together under this unusual circumstance. And how much of your own experience as an investigator did you use to create this tale? I used quite a bit of it because uh, I have worked with the FBI before when I was a special agent with the Coast Guard. I was in a, at my last duty station as an agent was in Alameda, California. So I worked with the San Francisco PD and other law enforcement agencies in the job that I used to do. And um, so I did draw quite a bit from it, but I also drew from other people that I knew that were law enforcement. And uh, that's where we ended up the first book. Mm -hmm. Now we have a second and I'm almost finished with the third. Wonderful, wonderful. And these are going to be sequels? Yes, they are. It's, uh, and the story continues is the second one, and then the third one, A New Beginning. Wonderful, wonderful. Do you enjoy inhabiting that world that your characters live in? Yes, I do. Yeah. A lot. My characters are fun people, interesting people. Uh, they bring, a, they're so different, even though they're twins. Mm -hmm. And that gives me the opportunity to create even more, to be more open about things. So I, I really am enjoying this process. Sounds great. Sounds great. Now, when did you start writing the first book? How long did it take you? What was that process like? I started the first book about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And it... At three o'clock in the morning, the characters started dancing in my head <laughs> and I just had to get up and start writing. And I continue writing until the end. I wow. put everything on paper. And then, of course, you know, you have to go through and check spelling because you forget all kinds of things when you're typing. Sure, very you're just hammering you just it out, as like hammer. you say. Yeah. And uh, then... Um, then came the process of cleaning everything up and finding somebody willing to publish it. And I did. And Bookside Press has been treating me really good. Great. Uh, they republished my second book. And now we're waiting for me to finish my third. So it has been a good pro process. Wonderful. Have you envisioned these books as a TV series or a movie, perhaps? <laughs> 
a couple of people have asked me that question, and yes, I will love it to go, to have it in a next next flick or something like that. I have an idea who I want to play the the characters, the twin sisters, and who I would like to direct it and all that. Yes, but we will see what happens. Okay, well, who would play the twin sisters? I got to hear this. I need a little casting news. Oh, okay. Well, mm -hmm. you, the twin sisters in my mind will be played by Cody the Pablo. Okay. Great. And directed by Sasha Alexander. Great. So you're all set. You got a great cast. You got a wonderful director. You got a terrific writer. Excellent. Excellent. I'm so outside of your work as a writer now, uh, are you still working with Tukasa? I I work once in a while. I used to, I I co-founded Tukasa, then I became the executive director, then a uh, member of the board, but now I'm retired. We have in Tukasa an excellent, excellent executive director and also an excellent board that are moving the organization forward. It comes to a point in everything in life that you have to let other people take over so there could be growth in the organization. Right. And that's what I did. I let them grow and they are doing some amazing things which I am so proud of. And uh, we go from there. Great, great. You're quite a groundbreaker, the first Hispanic female special agent in the Coast Guard Investigative Service. That's quite an honor. And it's like I said, it's not an easy accomplishment for someone to do. How old were you? What year was this? When did you break that ground? I broke that ground when I was 35 years old. Mm -hmm. I barely made the cutoff to be an yeah. agent. And I was the oldest person in my class. And mm. everybody thought I was not going to make it because of the running and the exercises and all that. But I fooled them and I made mm. it. And I got my batch and my credentials and I became an agent. Wonderful. And when you work as a special agent in the Coast Guard, what are you investigating? Are you investigating... Um, incidents at sea or are you looking at uh fellow coast guards for uh, internal affairs what type of investigations everything and anything had you ever watched ncis not very much no well it's sort of, of like that most of the job it is what we did we also investigated internal uh the code of military justice um mm -hmm. different things coast guard has different um branches within the Coast Guard. They do so many things, uh, law enforcement, not only law enforcement, but they have uh, search and rescue. They have so many, many things. And we work with all the branches, uh, everything within the Coast Guard. And uh, it was an interesting time. Um, I was one of very few women Every time I got to a new office, I was the only woman. Right. Until I got to San Francisco, and then there were two of us. Wow. And I was happy. <laughs> but uh, most of the time, I was the only one. And it was learning for me and for them to yeah. learn about having a woman there and for me to learn how to work with an office full of men. Exactly. Exactly. I think the best part about being in the Coast Guard service is the beautiful locations where the Coast Guard headquarters are. I mean, <laughs> the, the prettiest beaches I know, there's a Coast Guard station. Do you agree yeah, with me? There are some some beautiful things, uh, some beautiful spots that the Coast Guard is sent to. Sure. But as an agent, I was sent to places that were not all that beautiful. Right. Because that was my job wasn't to... Um, to rescue people out in the middle of the sea. My job right. was to find the drug dealers bringing the drugs in through the middle of the sea. Right. So it's a little different. You're not hanging out at Coast Guard Station, Watch Hill in Rhode Island. You're uh, doing some interdictions in uh, more dangerous places. Where yeah. did you, were you mostly based? Mostly San Francisco? No, I worked in New York City, mm -hmm. uh, Miami, DC, uh, and California. Um, so I went to a couple of places. Uh, one of the things that they told me 
when I got hired was that I was going to be sent to areas that mostly spoke Spanish because of my Spanish background. Guess what? That's where I ended. Mm. You know, San Francisco, uh, Miami, New York. Beautiful cities, the best part of the country. I know you're doing a rough job in dealing with some tough characters, but uh, you did it for, you know, a good cause, keeping America safe keeping our people safe. And like I said, you're a groundbreaker as well. Are you enjoying this new hat that you're wearing as a writer? I am loving it. Uh, yeah. I started writing at the age of nine. The only mm -hmm. thing I wanted to do in life was to be a writer. I didn't want to do anything else. But as we all know, life takes us into different uh, path, into mm -hmm. different things. And I have been lucky to keep my dream alive, to keep going. And today I am living my dream. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, the name of the book is How Could It Be? It is a thrilling crime novel about twin sisters that has some twists and turns that you will never expect. It's a page turner. It's a book you will not want to put down. It is written by Ciamara Rodriguez, and we are delighted to have her here as a guest today on Spotlight. Ciamara, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, thank you to your audience for being with us. And I hope that you guys all enjoy the book and go and get both that one and the other one. The, exactly. And the story continues. Yep. How could it be? And the story continues and a third installment is coming out. So it will be a trilogy. And they are books that we hope to see on either the big screen or the small screen in our living room soon too. Ciamara, so, thanks again for being our guest. Thank you. And my pleasure. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight.